Listen to me, because this is very important. In the mosaic sacrificial system, two of the three organs that represented the soul of the animal was laid on the altar to be consumed by fire. Turn to the book of Leviticus and I'll show you what I'm talking about. First, look at Leviticus chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. This is the trespass offering. So I want to show you that restitution had to be made. Reparations had to be paid if it was a trespass offering. Because it's different than a sin offering. So follow along with me. Verses 1 through 6, Leviticus chapter 6. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, If a person sins and commits a trespass against the Lord by lying to his neighbor, isn't that funny? You lie to your neighbor, that's a trespass against God. You want to know why? Because of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not lie. God gave you that command and you broke God's command. Let's keep going. By lying to his neighbor about what was delivered to him for safekeeping or about a pledge or about a robbery. Or if he has extorted from his neighbor, or if he has found what was lost and lies concerning it and swears falsely. And any one of these things that a man may do in which he sins, then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty. Now some of you actually have Bible translations that will refer to the trespass offering as a guilt offering. The reason they do that is because it refers to the guilt that you experience. But you ought to have guilt on the sin offering too. Well, anyways, and is guilty that he shall restore what he has stolen or the thing which is extorted or what was delivered to him for safekeeping or the lost thing which he found or all that about which he has sworn falsely. He shall restore its full value, add one fifth more to it. You don't just pay back what you stole. You got to give 20% more. Restitution, reparations. And you give it to whomever it, who, whomever it belongs on the day of his trespass offering. You make what you've done right. You pay for what you've done, plus you add to it. You knew better. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord, a ram without blemish from the flock, with your valuation as a trespass offering to the priest. So as you can see, the trespass offering required confession, restitution, and a sacrificial offering for the wrong that you've committed. Now, let's look at the, sacrifice, the sacrificial offering itself. How did you offer the sacrifice, the trespass offering? Well, jump over to chapter 7. Let's read verses 1 through 5. And this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the place where they kill the burnt offering shall they kill the trespass offering. And the blood thereof shall he sprinkle upon the altar round about it. And he shall offer it of it all the fat thereof, the fat tail and the fat that covers the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat is on them, which is by the loins. And the call upon the liver with the kidneys shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. It is a trespass offering. So in essence, after you made things right... You paid restitution. You brought a ram to the temple. You laid your hands on it. You confessed your sin. And then the ram was killed. The priest caught the blood and they sprinkled the blood around the altar. And then he took the two kidneys and the lobe of the liver and the fat surrounding them. And he placed them on the altar. And what remained was given to the priest to eat within the temple. Now, there were three organs that represented the soul in an animal. The kidneys, the liver, and the heart. Let me say that again. There were three organs that represented the soul in an animal. The kidneys, the liver, and the heart. In fact, the kidneys were considered to be the essence of an animal. Look at Job chapter 19 verses 26 and 27. And after my skin has been destroyed and in my flesh I will see God. You know what Job's saying? Everything's been taken away from him, even his health. He's, th he's this close to dying. And he says, you know what? I know that one day I will see God with my own eyes. I and not another. And then he says this, how my heart yearns within me. Now the word heart is translated from the Hebrew word 
kill y'all. And guess what it means? Kidneys. Kidneys. In fact, it's the very same Hebrew word that Moses used in Leviticus for kidneys. We've translated it as heart in Job because we think of the heart as representing the seat of the soul. But in ancient Israel, the kidneys were thought to represent the seat of the soul. Let me give you one more scripture to make my point. Look at Psalms chapter 16, verse 7. I will bless Jehovah who has given me counsel. Yea, my heart instructeth me in the night seasons. Boy, that sounds so good. Until you realize that the word heart is translated from the Hebrew word kilia, kidneys. The same word that Moses used in the book of Leviticus for the kidneys. Now, as I said, there were three organs that represented the soul. The kidneys, the liver, and the heart. The heart pumps the blood through the body. The kidneys and the liver filter the blood. Now, only the kidneys and the liver were laid on the altar to be consumed by fire, not the heart. Why? Does anyone know? Well, as I said, the heart pumps the blood through the body, but it does not detoxify the blood. Whereas the kidneys and liver do. The liver filters the toxins and waste products from your blood to remove them. It transforms fat-soluble toxins into a water-soluble form so they can be eliminated in your urine. In fact, I'll go a step further. If you have some type of toxin in your body that cannot be transformed into a water-soluble form, your liver actually builds a protective layer around it. It remains in your liver. It's just surrounded and can't escape back into the body. That's what your liver does. Likewise, the kidneys also filter excess toxins and waste from your blood, and it releases them in your urine. So of the three organs that represent the soul, two of them detoxify the blood of toxins and waste products, the kidneys and the liver. Therefore, they represent man's Sinful soul. The atomic nature. Did you know that? Yeah. There's a reason why the heart's not laid on the altar. Unless it's the burnt offering. It's because the kidneys and the liver represent man's sinful soul. The atomic nature. So they were placed on the altar to be consumed by fire in order to make an atonement for your sin. Now remember, what the Messiah did to atone for your sin was patterned after what the animal sacrifices did to atone for your sin. That's why Isaiah 53, verse number 11 says, He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Look at verse 11 and let's read it. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Now, the Mosaic sacrificial system required that the soul of the animal, the sinful part, be burned on the altar. Now, according to Moses, it was supposed to be an offering made by fire. Do you get that? It's supposed to be an offering made by fire. You cannot make an offering any other way. It has to be consumed by fire. That's what Leviticus chapter 7 verses 4 and 5 say. Now, I want you to notice the word satisfied in verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. That word satisfied is translated from the Hebrew word sabah. And it's a theological term that means the demands of the law have been completely fulfilled and full restitution has been paid for the wrongs a person has committed. God is not satisfied until every sin, every wrong has been paid for fully and restitution has been made. The point being that what the law demanded and what God demanded as a payment for sin was paid in full through Jesus' death and the travail of his soul. You see, the travail of the soul refers to the burning on the altar. It's an offering made by fire. 
Look at Leviticus chapter 7 verses 4 and 5 again and you'll see what I'm talking about. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them which is by the loins. And the coal upon the liver, the lobe. With the kidneys shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. Now notice this. For an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. He will not accept it any other way. It has to be made by what? Fire unto Jehovah. It's a trespass offering. Listen to me. This is very important. The cross alone was not enough to satisfy the wrath of God, thereby making a propitiation for our sin. Let me say that again. The cross alone was not enough to satisfy the wrath of God, thereby making a propitiation for our sin. The travail of Jesus' soul in hell was also required. In other words, Jesus' soul had to be placed in the fire of God's refining judgment, just as the animal's kidney and liver had to be placed in the fire of God's refining judgment. It's an offering made by fire. Leviticus chapter 7 verse 5. Those who don't believe this don't understand the Mosaic sacrificial system. And they surely don't understand Isaiah chapter 53. Because Isaiah went to great lengths to make sure that we see the link. That we see the connection between the Messiah's sacrifice and the animal sacrifices. If you don't see the connection, then you won't understand what Jesus did for you. Now let's talk about the fire. Because the trespass offering, the sin offering, the peace offering, and even the burnt offering are offerings that must be made by fire. So let's talk about the fire on the altar. 